eternal, righteous, and invisible Father in heaven. Praise, honor, glory, and adoration be unto your holy name, dear Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. All glory be unto your name, Lord, for your wonderful mercies bestowed upon us, for your long suffering and loving kindness. Lord, we say, your name be praised. You have not dealt with us according to our iniquities, nor considered our sins, but you have been good to us, dear Lord. We long to reflect your character in our lives and to show our appreciation towards you by giving glory to your name on this earth. Lord, make us instruments by which your name shall be glorified, make us instruments by which your will will be made known and done on this earth. Please, Father, grant us of your spirit to this end. These devotions we do are helps for us to do that. So please, as we go through the words of our devotion now, consecrate us and grant us understanding. Give us wisdom. Give us power. These lessons are very, very practical. They touch on the points of our lives on a daily basis. Help us, Lord, to be transformed by the things we learn. And put your words in my mouth, Lord, that everyone may be blessed. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Conflict and Courage, March 11. A prison apprenticeship. His feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in chains of iron until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tried him. Psalm 105 verse 18 and 19. Joseph's faithful integrity led to the loss of his reputation and his liberty. This is the severest test that the virtuous and God-fearing are subjected to, that vice seems to prosper while virtue is trampled in the dust. Joseph's religion kept his temper sweet and his sympathy with humanity warm and strong. Notwithstanding all his trials, no sooner does he enter upon prison life than he brings all the brightness of his Christian principles into active exercise. He begins to make himself useful to others. He is cheerful for he is a Christian gentleman. God was preparing him under this discipline for a situation of great responsibility, honor and usefulness. And he was willing to learn. He took kindly to the lessons the Lord would teach him. He learned to bear the yoke in his youth. He learned to govern by first learning obedience himself. Joseph's real character shines out even in the darkness of the dungeon. He held fast his faith and patience. His years of faithful service had been most cruelly repaid, yet this did not render him morose or distrustful. He had the peace that comes from conscious innocence and he trusted his case with God. He found a work to do, even in the prison. God was preparing him in the school of affliction for greater usefulness and he did not refuse the needful discipline. In the prison, witnessing the results of oppression and tyranny and the effects of crime, he learned lessons of justice sympathy and mercy that prepared him to exercise power with wisdom and compassion. It was the part he acted in the prison, the integrity of his daily life and sympathy for those who were in trouble and distress that opened the way for his future prosperity and honor. Every ray of light that we shed upon others is reflected upon ourselves. Every kind and sympathizing word spoken to the sorrowful every act to relieve the oppressed, and every gift to the needy, if prompted by a right motive, will result in blessings to the giver. Amen. The title of our devotion for today is A Prison Apprenticeship. We have been looking at the life of Joseph, from his father's partiality shown to him in his house, and how it led to his brothers being angry with him, not just because of that partiality, but also because of his own righteousness and goodness. They, like Cain, almost or well nigh killed him. 
were it not to be for God's intervention. Now, in that day in Dothan, that place Dothan will mean a lot to Joseph. He couldn't have been expecting that this was going to be what his life would end with. Something worse now has happened to him. Slavery is some nothing. It's nothing compared to what he is now passing through in prison because of his integrity. His integrity is what is leading him all the way. His integrity led him to be sold by his brothers. Hated by his brothers first of all and then sold by his brothers to the Ishmaelites and then to Potiphar's house. His integrity led him to be made the head of Potiphar's servants. This same integrity because it will not yield to temptation now has led him to prison. This must be a terrible situation. How would he have thought of his brothers now? It was them who led him to where he is today. Potiphar's wife is just in the mix. Were it not to be that his brothers did what they did to him, he wouldn't be in prison. Prison. Imagine what it's like. Prison. Oh, I myself can't understand what it was like for, for Joseph. For those who have not been to prisons to visit and see people who are there and what it's like, you may not understand what it was or what it was what it is like today for someone to be led in prison. And this was Joseph's lot. And what has led him here? It is the will of God. You know the will of God for your life by keeping his commandments. Wherever keeping the commandments of God leads you, that is where you ought to be. I take that again. Do you want to know where you ought to be? What God's will is for your life? Continue to keep God's commandments and that is where you ought to be. Wherever it leads you, whatever the consequences, is it death? That's where you are to be. Is it prison? That's where you are to be. Is it Potiphar's house? That's where you are to be. Is it to be sold as a slave? That is where you are to be. Anything short of that, you are going away from God's will for your life. Do not do things that will lead you away from God's will. Genesis 39, reading from verse 19, says, And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled, and Joseph's master took him, and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Amen. God always protects his own and we keep seeing it everywhere. Whether it is in the life of Abraham or the life of Isaac or Jacob and now Joseph, the Lord is protecting his own because he has a plan for Joseph. So wherever we find ourselves, just do the will of God and the Lord will show you mercy. It wasn't so bad for Joseph in prison later on. At the beginning, it wasn't easy for him because the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 105, verse 18 and 19, that they hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in chains of iron until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tried him. See, the Bible makes it clear that it was God who was doing all this. It was divine providence that permitted these events to happen to Joseph. Conflict and Courage, page 76, paragraph 2 says, This matter of betrayal, this is the severest test that the virtuous and God-fearing are subjected to. That vice seems to prosper while virtue is trampled in the dust. This reminds me of many ladies today who are keeping themselves virtuous and are rejected and many are worried as to why they are not getting husbands. Vice seems to prosper and virtue is trampled in the dust. Take courage from the life of Joseph. Joseph's religion kept his temper sweet. Don't lose your temper because you haven't gotten a husband. Don't lose your temper because your virtue is not being noticed. And in fact, not only is it not being noticed, but it's actually being trampled in the dust. It is for the same reason that you're actually being neglected. Many will give you advice and say, you should sleep with Potiphar's wife so that you can get or avoid being in prison. It's the same thing as telling a lady, oh, you should change some of the things you're doing and get a little bit seductive so that you can get a husband. So that your vice will now get what you want and your virtue is not going to give you what you want. And that's the advice they give to you. 
read Psalm 37 and help yourself. If you find yourself in such situation, read the book of Psalms 37 and get encouragement from there. So, Joseph now is found in prison and it is the Lord who has led him there and it's a severe test for him. His own righteousness has led him to this situation. His hands now they bound with fetters, iron chains on him, tormented in prison at first. Now, what would he do? Hmm. We read, Joseph's religion kept his temper sweet and his sympathy with humanity warm and strong notwithstanding all his trials. How do we react to oppression, injustice or betrayal? Joseph's example will help us know how to sweeten our bad situations. We took it well. It didn't change his character. In fact, we are told in the devotion, Joseph's real character shines out even in the darkness of the dungeon. He held fast his faith and patience. His years of faithful service had been most cruelly repaid, yet this did not render him morose or distrustful. He had the peace that comes from conscious innocence, and he trusted his case with God. He found a work to do, even in the prison. So when we find ourselves in terrible situations, let us not, at that, uh, for that reason, begin to go into crime and vice. One thing that is most important is how Joseph maintains his character in every situation he finds himself. So what do we do in times of uh, trouble like this? as this one that Joseph is passing through. For us, we can relate with this situation, like I've said, even for ladies, and for many today, because you choose to keep God's commandments, you are stuck in school because you didn't choose to cheat like other people. The lecturer says, oh, sort the course or pay money so that you can pass or sleep with me so that you can pass. And because you didn't do that, now you have an extra semester, you have an extra year, because you are refusing to write the exams that they placed on the Lord's holy day, the Sabbath, or because you do not join the people in cheating in the exam hall or paying the lecturer, what do you do? Let it not make you bitter. We can learn a lesson from Joseph's life. He stayed about four long years in that prison. Prison is not university. You are free. We choose to put ourselves in the schools and many other things that we pass through. You can't compare this to Joseph's case. Joseph was locked up in prison. He lost his liberty and freedom because of his righteousness. And that's why I compare these cases and say our case is nothing compared to Joseph. What is your own case? You're not locked up in prison. Your lot is better. But Joseph's integrity led him to prison. And how did he take it? He took it well. Four years at least in that prison. Hope didn't present to him any prospect of favor in the future. And I tried to imagine Joseph thinking of his father Jacob and his brothers in that prison. Perhaps thinking I may never see them again. I may never see my father again. His mind will be, I don't know what my, what tomorrow is. How long am I going to stay in this prison? No hope, no connections. Who do you know? The man who put you in prison is a strong person, the captain of Pharaoh's guard, Potiphar. How are you going to release yourself from here? He doesn't have any family connections in Egypt. He doesn't know anyone. He's just a slave, a Hebrew slave. Who is he going to appeal to? There's no help from any man for Joseph. And every day, he accepted his lot, continuing to do the best he could do while he was there. As I think of Joseph's situation, I wonder what I would have done, how I would have felt every day in that prison. Remembering where he came from, remembering his brothers who sold him in the first place, remembering his father's partiality, it is very easy to go into despair and be filled with deep hatred, bitterness and darkness in times like these. We see people who, because of some evil thing that happens to them, they turn to criminals. Cruelty and injustice has made a criminal out of many men and many have been driven into a life of violence, recklessness and deep cruelty through the betrayal and injustice the world has dished out to them. But it was not so with Joseph. He continued his life serving his God without compromise and making the best out of the situation he found himself. The prison is the place where the worst kind of characters are learned and the worst kinds of people are seen. But Joseph was unaffected by this. He will still not lie, steal, 
kill, speak evil and insult anyone, or use profane language like the other inmates and practice mischief as is commonly done by most inmates. He was faithful to God's law and stood out as a mighty pillar among mere stones. He was one who was easily noticed because of his outstanding character. His diligent life of paying attention to little things was easily noticed by the prison wardens. His gentleness and kindness was was admired by his inmates. Forgetting himself, he looked more to the things of others and was always there to comfort, help and encourage the other inmates. This made the wardens to set him as the head of the other prisoners. It was not always easy for him at the beginning. It was these same wardens were the ones that hurt his feet with fetters and inflicted pain on him when he was first delivered to prison. But Joseph harbored no bitterness or ill feelings towards them. Had he done this, he would not have the spirit to be kind and helpful to these same wardens or to the prisoners. Like his great-grandfather Abraham, he was a servant to strangers and cared more for others than for himself. The oppression he saw others face made him forget his own very quickly. As he got engrossed in showing sympathy and compassion for others, he forgot his own problems. Self-forgetfulness, that same self-forgetfulness that Joseph had in the house of of Potiphar. That same self-denial was displayed in prison. That same gentleness that made him rise as the chief servant in Potiphar's house. He is displaying it here again. He sees his character, consistent character. He didn't lose it because of the cruelty and the injustice he faced. This self-forgetfulness is a priceless virtue. It was this that made Joseph so useful. His character was easily noticed by two of Pharaoh's prisoners who when they had a dream could confide in Joseph and receive help from him. If Joseph was not helpful to people, if he was not kind and gentle, if he was not loving, if they didn't see the helpfulness and desire to be good to others, they wouldn't have come to confide in Joseph. These two prisoners of of Pharaoh, that is the butler and the, the baker, two of them wouldn't have told Joseph their dreams. But they came and met Joseph and told him. Remember that Joseph was placed at the head as the head of this prison. So that means it's not as if he was necessarily locked up in the same place with these people. But Joseph had made himself friendly with everyone in the prison by being helpful to them, by being kind to them, by being um, hardworking in that prison. And like we read, take note of what we read here so that you understand how this prison setup is. In the book of Genesis 29, verse 22 and 23 says, The keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there he was the doer of it the keeper of the prison looked not to anything anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did the Lord made it to prosper so you can imagine Joseph perhaps placed in a different place from these other people that means they have to come and approach him and meet him why would they come and approach him because they knew they could talk to him they knew that this man was different and why did they know he was different clearly they could see it both in his countenance in his words and his actions and this is what opened the way for joseph tracing the end of joseph we can see that had he not been self-forgetful and caring he would not have had the opportunity to make contact with Pharaoh's baker and the cup and the cup bearer and the butler. Being in the prison was not enough. Were his character to be one like those who were always needy, drowning themselves in self-pity, always needing sympathy and encouragement from others and seeking help instead of being self-forgetful and looking at to how they can help others, he would not make contact with the man who eventually will be his helper. You see, character is important in deciding our destiny. Every choice we make will eventually make its mark on us and contribute to our final destination. Like we read, it says, Joseph found a work to do even in the prison. God was preparing him in the school of affliction for greater usefulness and he did not refuse the needful discipline. In the prison, witnessing the results of oppression and tyranny and the effects of crime, he learned the lessons of justice sympathy and mercy that prepared him to exercise power with wisdom and compassion it was the part he acted in the prison what part is that the integrity of his daily life and his sympathy for those who were in trouble and distress that opened the way 
for his future prosperity and honor. End of quote. So, this is what opened the way for Joseph. It's not enough that he was in prison. It's not enough that he knew these two men who were Pharaoh's um, workers. If he didn't have these characters, he wouldn't make any friendly contact with these people. And it was this contact he made with them that opened the way for Joseph to be brought later to Pharaoh's household in helping them and not just making contact with them and being friendly but his connection with God made him have the ability to interpret that dream and when he interpreted the dream for them and it came to pass their confidence in him the one who was alive because the other one was killed their confidence the confidence in him was increased confidence was increased so you may be suffering injustice today you need to learn to react to it in the right manner and not have a bitterness or become distrustful to others. Like Joseph, he didn't become distrustful and say, I will never trust people again and all of that. He still carried the same kind spirit. I've known people to say, because of what this person do to me, did to me, I will never do this and that and that to people again. And they, 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 because iniquity abounds, the love of many wax cold. But for Joseph, his love did not wax cold because of the iniquity that abounded. And he was a recipient of the evil of this iniquity. But yet, Joseph did not allow his love to wax cold. And as Christians, we are not to allow our love to wax cold and say, the goodness that I did before led me to prison. I will never be good to people again. No, he didn't become self-distrustful. He didn't keep his light to himself. He was still shedding it to everyone. And in doing that, he was prospered. So, we need to learn to react to injustice in the right manner. Whenever we, through our life of faithful obedience to God, are led into trying paths, let us graciously accept our lot as a training. Remember, Josephson was a training. Think for the future. Accept it and fe- say to yourself, this is my training. The Lord is preparing me for higher things. Believing that the Lord is working in us a character that will be needed for greater responsibilities in the future. We are to cheerfully say like Jesus, The cup which my father has given me to drink, shall I not drink of it? Jacob drank his cup cheerfully. The cup his father gave him to drink, he drank of it. Let us believe that our light affliction is working for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Let us always be faithful wherever we are and I'll repeat that lesson again. If we are not keeping the commandments of God, you will not lead yourself to where God wants you to be. Do you want to know God's will for your life? Look at the life of Joseph. It was God's will. In providence, he was sold as a slave. In providence, he was made the head of Potiphar's house. In providence, he was taken to prison. And in providence, he later was the prime minister of Egypt. But had Joseph not played his part, and what is that part? So that the will of God would be fulfilled in his life. What was the part Joseph was playing? Joseph was playing the part of fidelity, always keeping the commandments of God. And wherever it led him, that is where he was supposed to be. So for us, you may be saying, Ah, I cannot keep God's commandments because it's going to make me lose this or that. But then, if you break it, you are going to take yourself away from the will of God into a path that it was not God's will for you to go. Therefore, learn the lesson. Maintain integrity, strict integrity. Whatever the consequences are of keeping God's commandments, will it lead you to prison? That is where you are supposed to be. Keep God's commandments and then, if you are led to prison, understand that this is God's will, that you should be in prison. Are you led to Potiphar's house? Understand that is God's will, that you should be in Potiphar's house. Are you demoted from your position because you kept God's commandments? Fret not, my brothers and sisters, that is God's will for you. He is training you for something greater, for a higher responsibility. But if you say that you will go away from God's will by breaking his commandments, you lose everything. Joseph, had he hearkened to Pharaoh's Potiphar's wife would not be where he is now. And if he's not where he is, he wouldn't have made contact, not just where he is. And also, if he had not continued in that character of gentleness, strict integrity, and industry, helpfulness, if he didn't do that in that prison, those two men would have not confided in him. So it's very important that this holistic life and balanced life should be in us. Being hardworking is not enough. After being hardworking, we must combine it with being caring and compassionate and loving to the people around us and kind, being helpful to them. 
so that we can have that balanced life and the Lord will lead us to exactly where he wants us to be. Are you facing oppression and injustice? Is your virtue being trampled on the dust? Like I said, read Psalms 37 and encourage yourself. The Bible tells us, Fret not thyself because of evildoers who are prospering in their way. Evildoers shall be consumed, but the Lord will give the the meek will inherit the earth and the Lord will set everything straight in due time. We just need to endure. Longer than Joseph, shorter than Joseph, I don't know. But we need to endure and trust in the Lord that he will bring us out of our affliction in due season. After it has worked out what he wants it to work out because we can cooperate with God and learn the lessons he wants us to learn in that situation and don't prolong it by going away from his law. Learn the lessons and but if you do what God wants you to do, you will not even prolong your troubles and the Lord will bring you to where he wants you to be finally. And that doesn't mean you must be a prime minister of Egypt. Some people's end is not like that. It may be like Jesus to die on the cross, like Stephen to be stoned, like Paul to be beheaded, like Daniel to be also the prime minister of Babylon, whichever one. But we must be content to know that wherever we are is exactly where God God's will is. We pray every time that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then, let the Lord's will be done in your life. It must not be as bed of roses for some people. It may be wherever, like I've just listed the case of Jesus and many others. But we should be content to know that the will of God is being done through us. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us that in all things, Regardless of consequence, we will maintain strict integrity that we may be brought to be exactly where you want us to be, that we may glorify your name in that location. Help us, Lord, to imbibe in ourselves these characters of industry, strict integrity, fidelity to the law of God, and also gentility, meekness, kindness, amiability, that we may be wholly balanced and be brought to the place where you want us to be. Dear Lord, grant to us the gift of your Spirit that we may put into practice all that we have learned. There are some people presently who may be passing through oppression and injustice. Their virtue is being trampled on the dust and vice is prospering. Lord, comfort such a person who is losing things because of their own virtue, who is praying to you for blessings, but because of their integrity, they are not getting it. Comfort such a soul, Lord, And I pray that you will help such a one to be comforted in the knowledge that the Lord is working out good things in their life. Help us, Lord, not to give up in virtuous life. No matter where it leads us to help us, Lord, to continue living that virtuous life, regardless of consequences. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name I've prayed.